Hello everyone. In this video, we will be covering the workflow of beam design in RCDC. This particular video will cover the pre-design settings for the design as well as the detailing and what will be its impact on the design of beam. So, in this video, we will cover different types of grouping that is possible in RCDC. Also, different design settings that can be made in RCDC so as to get and handle the design output. Then there are different curtailment settings available, the detailing and drawing settings that are available, the preferred bar spacing and how we can set the load cases and load combinations that we need to use for the design. So to start with, we will enter the project detail, the client detail, the engineer working on it and we can select the desired design code from the list of codes available. We need to select the analyzed file and once the file is selected and read we can select the beam module now once we select the beam module all the levels at which the beams will be present will be listed over here so at this stage we can perform the grouping of beam across levels so all the levels at which the typical layout is there we can group such levels by selecting the levels which are typical in layout so beam can be grouped over here vertically across a series of typical levels so once we have selected the two levels to be grouped and when we go ahead to create a new project rcdc will check for the similarity of the levels prior to proceeding so while performing this check rcdc will check various aspects like the number of beams at the selected levels is same or not it will also check if the sizes of the beam is same or not and if the continuity of the beams internally is same or not so the basic similarity check is performed internally in rcdc and if the floors are exactly the same then rcdc will perform the grouping of the levels so we go here and create a new project so once the file is read we can see the layout on the right hand side and on left hand side we have two tabs one is the design grouping tab and one is the beam continuum so under the design grouping tab we can see the member numbers at both the levels will be displayed in these columns now over here rcdc reads the beam geometry and then detects the continuity of the beam the list of beams and columns along with their continuum is displayed in Two possible views design grouping and beam column continuum now beam numbering over here is done from top to bottom and left to right so I will start left to right but I'll go downwards first the horizontal beam numbering and then the vertical beam numbering which will be at bottom to top in left to right direction so in this way the beam numbering is done now in the beam continuum view the view displays the beam column continuum that has been detected by rcdc so under the beam description the analysis reference of the beam is displayed so over here my analysis reference for beam b1 has been displayed so one another thing to understand what we can do under the beam continuum is that we can edit the continuity of the beam as per our requirement in rcdc itself so rcdc has its own logic of Detecting the continuity of the beam as it will detect the all column to column beams as primary beams. The next will be the beams resting on primary beam to primary beam will be the secondary beam. And if we have any other beam which is resting on secondary beam to primary beam or secondary beam to secondary beam will be the tertiary beam. So this is how RCDC keeps on detecting the continuity and type of beam. But if there is a requirement to change the continuity, then there is an option in RCDC to do so. To understand the same, we have taken the example of another small type of a layout. So, if we look into this part of the layout, RCDC has detected B7 to be spanning between C10 and C11 as it is a column to column B. But as per project requirement, it is desired that B11 which is currently resting on B7 and C8, B11 should be a cantilever beam as per requirement. So first step what I can do is, uh, firstly I will remove the support which is B7. So I can right click over here and say remove support. 
so once the support is removed now b11 is a cantilever beam for rcdc which is resting c8 now i want to split the beam b7 in two parts so i can either click over here and i can say split beam in two parts from the layout or you can also do it from here so i can select the beam b7 say split beam so it will automatically get splitted into b7 and b17 now this b17 number has come after the last beam number which is b16 so in this way there are various other options to edit the continuity of beam in rcdc environment itself what else can be done under beam continuum is over here i have purposefully split the four beams which can be a single group of beams in continuity which is known as the design grouping okay so now if i have four beams what i can do i can select individual beam i have selected the group now i can merge two selected group by selecting the group b2 so now i have performed the design grouping of two individual beams b1 and b2 similarly now i will select this group and i will select b3 right click and say merge to selected now remains b4 so i select the group b1 b2 b3 select group and i will say merge to selected so in this way rcdc allows user to select a single beam to perform design grouping so this is this type of grouping is a design grouping now the next type of grouping is i can group three different types of group like i can select three group of beams right click and i can say create a group so once i say create a group this is this type of grouping is so these type of group of beams will have same design so in this example b33 37 and 41 will have same design so the design will be based on the highest forces from all the three beams so rcdc performs the grouping of beam in two ways one is the design grouping which we have already seen that depends upon the end conditions of the beam or the support conditions and this is rcdc will perform checks like total number of beams in the group are same or not as we have selected these three groups to be grouped in a single group rcdc has checked whether there are same number of beams or not the type of con support condition for the beams is same or not or the sizes of the beam in each group is same or not or the length of the beam is same or not so for example if we say b35 39 and 43 have same length but in case if there is a difference of length for beam 43 by plus or minus 10% then also rcdc will perform the grouping in this way there are different parameters which are considered in rcdc while performing the grouping of beams now this type of grouping can be performed by selecting the groups in in plan or you can go to modify and say group or ungroup the beams by selecting the group of the beams coming back to our workflow going ahead we move on to the different settings available in rcdc the first setting is the general and the reinforcement settings under this the the first option is to ignore the torsion so whenever there is a case wherein the torsion needs to be ignored so in that case we can use the option we can use this check box and uh, mention the value over here below which the torsion is to be ignored i have the option to ductile design for shear at supports or at all sections so when we say perform ductile design especially when it comes to shear and we have selected ductile shear at supports in that case rcdc will per, uh, perform additional shear which is introduced due to sway at the supports only but when we select to perform the ductile design especially for shear at all the sections then rcdc will calculate the additional shear due to sway at left mid as well as the right section so that is the difference between ductile design at supports for shear and at all sections for shear 
now next we have the option for designing the beams as planched beams so when we check this option the beams like the secondary beams only can be designed as planched beam or all the beams can be designed as planched beams so the beams can be designed as t beam or l beam depending upon the location of the beam so an external peripheral beam is a l beam or an internal beam is a t beam once we select this option and press on ok we need to enter the flange thickness so there are two options for the same one is we can manually enter the flange thickness so all those beams like we have selected the secondary beams to be designed as planched beams so rcdc has automatically detected the secondary beams and the section design will be as a t beams so for such beams we need to enter the thickness of the slab over here so we can either enter a manual thickness say 100 mm or if i have already designed the slab at this level 7.8 meter i can simply go to file i can say import slab data and select the rcdc slab file which is designed at that particular level and say open so once we say okay the slab geometry as well as the slab thickness will get imported for all the beams now once the slab thickness is imported we can see the slab thickness over here and only those beams which are to be designed as planched beams will be undergoing the planched design philosophy now over here generally the sections where the bending is at the bottom can be designed as flanged sections so that is with the settings of the flanged beams there is an option in rcdc to perform the bending and axial force design for beams so beams in rcdc can be designed for a combined effect of axial and biaxial moments depending on the user's choice in biaxial design rcdc will identify the type of section depending on the axial force on the beam and detail the beam accordingly under biaxial design of beams combined effect of moment and axial forces checked by plotting the pm interaction curve and shear will be checked in both the directions further there is an op uh, option also available for user to select which type of beam needs to be designed for the biaxial bending criteria then we have different detailing settings like we have the detailing settings separately for top and bottom there are three options best fit max and min diameter for top whereas for bottom we have the option of best fit and max let us see what is the difference between the three for top and one for two for bottom so for a simple understanding i have listed down the difference for the detailing style for top so when we have selected best fit as we will calculate and calculate the requirement for the left mid and right zone separately and provide accordingly so over here if we take an example of this so over here on the left it is 620 420 in the center it is 616 whereas on the right side it is again the twin, uh, configuration of 20 mm when we when we have selected maximum diameter as we will provide as we will determine the maximum diameter which can be provided in all the three zones of the beam and then play with the number of bars in the first layer and and as per require it will increase the layer but but as we will provide the maximum diameter determined for the first layer so when get selected minimum diameter then rcdc determines a minimum diameter and provides it through in the left mid and right zone and as per requirement it provides the required bar in the second layer as well same like top for bottom the detailing style available is best fit and max dia so when best fit option is selected rcdc will detail the left zone mid zone and the right zone as per the actual ast requirement and the closest ast provided arrangement whereas for max dia rcdc will maintain 
the maximum dia selected throughout the section of the beam in the left mid and right zone and whatever additional is required say in the bottom will be provided in the second layer so in this way the detailing style for bottom works with best fit and max dia then there are the settings for performing the crack fit so when we select to perform the crack fit check we need to enter the permissible crack fit and we can select the design code also user needs to set the material grade with which we want to perform the design the clear cover the maximum aggregate size needs to be entered now the aggregate size which is entered over here is used in the concrete this aggregate size mentioned over here is further used to determine the distance between the longitudinal bars in the beam cross section so in this way the number of bars maximum that can be suitable for a given width of the beam will be determined using the maximum aggregate size then the minimum and maximum rebar needs to be set for the main steel the shear steel and the side face reinforcement and the spacing criteria for the stair up also needs to be determined there is an option to provide different diameter for the master link and the vertical stair ups the main purpose of this option is to suffice the condition wherein there is a heavy torsion so this option plays a vital role when there is heavy torsion in the beam so beams with heavy torsion most of the times will have a higher diameter of the outer link and the inner diameter of the links will be the lower one or probably the same one depending upon the intensity of the torsion on that particular beam rcdc will first determine the shear reinforcement area to be provided and then try to optimize the outer link with the inner link so over here for a particular beam under consideration b8 the two legged t10 n n stands for the master link which is placed at 100 and the inner links which are two legged t8 which are denominated as b which are the vertical links are the inner links again spaced at 100 mm center to center so for the left mid and right zone for the shear the links are bifurcated into master and vertical so as to optimize the shear link consumption but if we check for the beam b7 it is there is no requirement or there is no such heavy shear wherein uh, there is a requirement to bifurcate the master link and the vertical links in this section we can see for b7 there is only six legged t8 at 100 mm center to center but for b8 we can see that the four legged t8 b are the vertical inner links and the two legged t10 which is the master link is provided on the outer piece so in this way rcdc also provides an option to bifurcate your outer and the inner strips going ahead we have the option for rebar curtailment wherein the curtailment location for top and bottom steel can be set and for shear zones also can be set then there is an option for detailing and drawing settings things which will have the impact on the drawings that is generated from rcds so for an example there is an option for marking the curtailment so for top if you want to mark the curtailment from support face or support center can be selected from here. there is also an option to mention if there is any specific requirement to be shown in the drawing so in this setting if there is any requirement to change the style in which the text is shown in drawing then it can be changed like if we have something like y dash and we don't want to dash over it means if we have a standard of showing the bar as 25 dash y 10 so we can show it like this going ahead we have the option to set the number of rebars for a considered width of the beam so for a 230 mm wide beam the default number is 3 but if we want to reduce it to 2 we can make it or if we want to increase it to 4 it can be done 
so they said the number of bars can be set initially before the designers perform for a particular width of the beam then there is an option to provide minimum two d bars in the zone with zero bending moment so for a case wherein there is zero bending moment for the top mid of a beam and we have selected this option and rcdc will provide the minimum diameter which is selected with two numbers in the zone where there is zero bending moment detected so over here we go here and set the basic load cases is dead slide this is my earth plate x and this is our plate z select all this and push it over here there is an option to add an uh, load combinations from my analysis file which i have already defined or i can add the load combination for a regular or an irregular type of structure from the standard template available over here so we can view the view or edit the standard template which is available so as we have added the required load combinations we can press on okay and go ahead to perform the auto design so that's all for this video and we shall continue ahead to understand the post design features available to modify the design that is obtained from redesign and what all kinds of reports can be extracted from rcdc thank you